So hello again and welcome to Imaginary Farts. This is a channel where I just talk about whatever the hell I feel like. And today I feel like talking about a rugged phone. So today's review is the Umadigi Bison. And I wanted to talk about this particular phone because I noticed that when it comes to rugged phones, you don't get a lot of hands-on reviews. Uh, you get a lot of footage that's stock with some uh, voiceovers and some, some music in the background and throwing up the graphics on the screen with all the specs, but they don't really tell you what it's like to use the phone. Another reason I wanted to do this video is those few hands-on reviews that I have seen, I've noticed that uh, some of the reviewers were a little lacking in accurate information and had some misconceptions. So I want to try to do a review that, that's a little more accurate. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm going to be an expert, but I will give you the information to the best of my ability. So, moving forward, the first thing let's talk about is the build on this. So, what we have here is a Gorilla Glass on the screen. The... Um, the website that I was looking on did not specify which Gorilla Glass this is, so I don't know if it's three or, or what, but it does specify it as Gorilla Glass, so you do have that. Uh, it is a metal and rubberized plastic build, but it is a heavy do, duty type build, uh, very solid. Um, it has a lanyard, place for a lanyard here at the bottom, has the USB-C charging, it has a small punch for the uh, microphone, the speaker right up here on the top for phone calls with a hole punch camera on the front. That's 12 megapixels, I believe. On the back of it, you've got your quad cam set up, 48 megapixel. It's got a wide angle uh, depth sensor and a micro. Um, let's see, going on to the left side of the phone you will notice that there is a button right here that is set up for push to talk it also can be programmed for sending out an sos in an emergency and you have your capacitive fingerprint reader on the right side which is a little bit different you normally see it on the left so some people may not like that i'm, I'm kind of liking it myself and of course the tray for your sim cards it is dual sim but it is hybrid dual SIM, so that means you can put an SD card in for expanded uh, storage and one SIM, or you can just rely on the 128 uh, gigabytes of storage it has and put in two SIM cards. Um, makes it a little more versatile. Well, let's look at the left side. On the left side, you'll see four buttons. Down here at the bottom is a customizable programmable button uh, it comes set up for your underwater camera but you can set it up for multiple different things you can open apps with it you can set it up for a single double push and a long push to uh, or press for three different actions uh, coming up a little bit further is your power button and right above that is your volume up and down so pretty standard as far as most uh, rugged phones go, with the exception of that uh, fingerprint reader being on the right-hand side. Oh, you'll also notice on the back here that there is the rear-facing speaker. So if you're uh, expecting a speaker on the bottom, nope, don't have it. Got it on the back. A lot of people don't like that. But I'll tell you what, I have discovered that with this loop for the lanyard, keeping the phone raised just a hair off of any flat surface, it actually creates a pretty good sound by reflecting off of whatever the phone is sitting on. So that's something to keep in mind. It's kind of nice. All right, let's move on to, well, let's move on to the UI. So 
you're going to notice that this phone has pretty much as basic and as simple and as straightforward of an Android 10 operating system as you can get. I don't think you're going to get much closer to stock. Um, in fact, it is so basic you cannot even change the columns uh, on the grid. So four across, that's what you get. Um, I did use this with a few other launchers just to try it out, and I gotta say it worked awesome with EV. The Smart Launcher 5 was great. Um, is it Poco or Paco? Paco Launcher, um, which uh, emulates the ones from the Paco or Poco phones, uh, was excellent. Excellent. It gave you a lot of versatility. But if you're not looking for anything like that, it is Android 10. It works well. And you're not going to find any issues there. Now, as far as screen resolution and that kind of thing goes, it's pretty basic. Uh, we're talking about 24 by 1080. Fairly normal. Um, we're talking about a screen refresh rate that is 60. We're not looking at a 90. We're not looking at 120. You're not going to get any of, the, any of that with it. Um, but it's good. It's good. It's got great colors. Um, you know, like I said, it's not going to be as vivid as uh, Amyloid, but you're going to be able to see it outside. Um, not top end, but gets the job done. So, speaking of the screen, I want to address something that I saw in another video, which kind of boggled me a little bit. So, I saw the guy, he took the phone and he threw it in a bowl of water because, yes, this is IP68, IP69K. And he wanted to address the underwater functionality. So he threw it in the bowl of water with it on and proceeded to try to use the touch screen and then complain that they were doing false advertising because it didn't work. He couldn't get the function, anything to work on the screen in the water. Now, first off, I looked at the ads for this phone. I looked at all the specs. I looked at the re other reviews. I looked at the reviews from the manufacturer. Never did they say that you could use the touch screen underwater. And frankly, I have yet to come across a single phone where I could do that. Um, you know, even your smart watches, which have, and there's a notification going off, even your smart watches that can be used underwater, uh, like, you know, the, the Samsung Active 2, um, it, you disable the screen because water over the whole screen is like the whole screen getting touched at one time. It just doesn't work. That is not the underwater functionality that they were bragging about with this phone. What they were talking about was that, that underwater camera, which is this push button right here on the side. And so if you're opening that underwater camera, and let me go into settings and switch it back. I have the underwater camera off right now um, because uh, I don't really use it. But let's, let's turn it back on and let me show you that. So when you have this phone and you've got it underwater and you press that one button, your underwater camera comes on. There you go. Tilt it down so there's no reflection. You can see that a little bit better. Now, here's the thing. The functionality for the underwater camera, if you want to take a picture, is the same button. That's what you use to take your picture. You don't use the screen. As you'll notice, that is whited out instead of red. So that reviewer evidently was... Uh, under a complete misunderstanding about underwater functionality. So anyway, let us go back. Oh, and to get out of this after you're in water underwater mode, you're going to hit the power button. If you don't hit the power button, you can't get back out of it. So you hit the power button. So going back to the functionality of this phone, um, yeah, it is IP. 68. It is IP69K. That's dustproof, shockproof, waterproof. Uh, they say waterproof. I've never found a phone yet that is 100% waterproof. 
but you can find phones that are water resistant for a certain amount of time at a certain depth. And that's what you're looking at here. Um, I can't remember the exact specs on it, but you know, 30 minutes, one and a half meters, that's typical. That's probably what you're looking at here. I'd have to look that up. Don't take that uh, as gospel. But you do have that. So you can take pictures on the water. Would I take it diving? No, I don't think so. Um, you get down uh, that deep, the pressure, it's, it's going to get water in it. So, you know, don't do that. Um, but it does proof. Uh, shock proof um, they put it through the drop test it, it does meet mill standard 810 um, which I believe allows you to drop it from and don't quote me on this but I think it's something like one and a half meters onto concrete or a hard surface um, at least three times or something like that um, just because a phone is rugged doesn't mean you can't break it I'm getting a little bit off topic um, let's go to the processor. Let's talk about that for a minute. So there was some complaints about the processor on this phone um, not being up to par. And I can kind of see that it is using a MediaTek Helio P60 processor, which is already a few years old. So it's not the, the best processor out there. And even when it was um, one of the newer processors, it was always considered more of a mid-range processor. And that's fine. If, if it gets the job done, that's fine. And it does get the job done. Uh, would I have liked to have seen a bigger processor in this? Uh, maybe one of the newer processors from MediaTek? Sure. But not only is it a rugged phone, it's a budget phone. So I didn't mention that earlier. Let's keep that in mind. Um, but it does come with 128 gigabytes of uh, internal storage, uh, which for most people, and particularly for me, um, I have yet to have a phone where I have needed more than 128 gigabytes of storage. Um, there have been times when I've done a lot of videos and uh, I uh, use some SD cards and, and, and to put those videos on so they wouldn't be on the phone. But for the most part, I, that, that's rare and doesn't happen. And most people, most people for everyday use are not going to need more than 128. But like I said before, if you do need more than 128, it is expandable. You can put an SD card in there and expand that, that, uh, that storage. So you do have that option and don't forget there is the option of getting flash drives with USB-C that plug into that bottom port so you can save uh, information on those remove it from your phone to the flash drive and into wherever else you need to to have it um, I'm gonna turn that underwater camera back off because I keep sitting for some reason I keep uh, hitting that button and you know what that's a good point that's something I should address right there um, if you're not used to having a lot of physical buttons on a phone that can become an annoyance so most people who deal with flagship phones and, and your basic everyday mid-range phones uh, Samsung LG whoever whatever you're getting from your carrier typically all you have is that power button and you're up and down on your volume um, if you do have a capacitive fingerprint reader it'll be on the back or you'll have that in-screen fingerprint reader, so you don't have the fingerprint reader on the side either. And most often you do not have dedicated buttons for cameras or SOS or, or push to talk. Occasionally you do, but mostly not. So if you're not used to that uh, and you're not in the habit of watching out how watching how you pick up your phone, it's very easy to hit that button. It's very easy to hit this button. And so it's very easy to accidentally open whatever push to talk app you have or to open that underwater camera. Um, a good solution to this, which is uh, what I did, is simply to turn off the underwater camera on the single press. Um, you can move that underwater camera to a double press or a long press. So you can actually turn off the single press 
to have no functionality. And then you can, as I did on this, set up the double press. I think I have, yeah, I have the flashlight on there. And then a uh, long press, I have a voice recorder. So, so you can do that. That is, uh, and it's easy to get out of those. Again, you're just hitting that power button to get out of whatever it is. So keep that in mind. Uh, if you don't like a lot of physical buttons getting in your way, you, it may be an issue for you. So uh, Let's see, what else do we want to address about this phone that people have just not really understood? Okay, cameras. Let's talk about the cameras on this phone. So here's the downside of a lot of rugged phones, and this one is no exception. It has a quad camera set up. Uh, as I said, you've got a 48 megapixel in there. I believe there is a 16 wide angle. Uh, I believe you have a 5 and a 2, or it might be a 2 and a 2. Uh, I'll have to go back and check. Those, that, those two smaller cameras are your depth sensor and your um, macro camera. Frankly, when it comes to macro cameras on phones, most of them are useless, even in the flagships. Let's just be honest about it. A 2 megapixel or a 5 megapixel macro camera is a gimmick, in my opinion, and it's not really necessary. And the whole idea of putting in quad camera setups on phones is a gimmick. Uh, more cameras, uh, more better. No, it's not necessarily more better. Um, really what it comes down to with your camera setups is your software. I mean, this does have a 48 megapixel Sony camera in it. Uh, it's a good camera. It has a 16 megapixel wide angle in it. That's a good camera. Um, the problem is when your software doesn't support the cameras. And that's what you run into with a lot of rugged phones is a lack of decent camera software. So... You know, if you want to just take everyday photo shots, uh, if you're just wanting to, you know, quick pick of what you're eating at the dinner table, I don't know why people do that. I think that's weird. It's going to get the job done. Um, if you're out and about and you see something interesting that you want to look into later and you just want to snap a quick shot so you don't, re you know, don't forget and you can remember it. Yeah, it's going to be fine for that. But if you're trying to take video you're not going to get decent video. It does not have image stabilization for the video. Uh, and just so people understand a little bit about that, image stabilization can be digital, uh, it can be optical. Uh, when they're talking about digital, it's in the software. The software does the stabilization for you. Um, I won't get into how that works. Uh, just uh, understand that with this phone, you're not going to get image stabilization for video. And as far as I understand it, you do not have the optical stimula uh, stabilization either. Optical stabilization is physical stabilization. In a lot of these phones, you don't realize it, but your, your main camera moves a little bit. You know, as you're walking and you're moving the camera, that, that lens will move in there just just a little bit, not a lot. And that's that's usually typically your higher end phones, your upper mid-range uh, flagship phones. You don't see that in low budget phones. Low budget phones and rugged phones, no stabilization. But that being said, you have to keep in mind, and this is the final thing I want to talk about, is price point. A lot of people ran this phone down. A lot of people claimed that it was a crappy phone because it didn't have a higher end processor. It didn't have stabilization. Uh, it didn't have the amyloid screen. It didn't have 256 or megabytes of, of storage. It also does not have an 800 700 or even a $600 price tag. It's 150 bucks, people. This is $150. $150 for a phone that you can drop from one and a half meters without worrying about damaging it. 
a $150 phone that will actually let you take pictures underwater, even if they're not the best. A $150 phone that has dual SIM that will let you run an ATT and a T-Mobile SIM card at the same time. A $150 phone that covers just about every 4G frequency band that you will need in the U.S. with the U.S. carriers. Obviously, not 5G. $150. So, let me reiterate, it's not a flagship, but it's not a piece of crap. It gets the job done, it does it decently well, not great, and it doesn't break the bank. So for all those people that keep knocking this phone, you know what? Stick to your flagships if that's the specs you want. And spend that kind of money if that's what you want to do. But for everybody else, if you just want a decent, solid, rugged phone that's not going to break the bank, that's going to at least get the job done, and that's going to be durable and hold up for a decent amount of time, I can't uh, think of a better phone. I really can't. So that's my take on it. I rambled a good bit. I gave y'all, I don't know, almost 25 minutes of uh, information that we probably could have boiled down to about five minutes. But um, you know what? Take it for what it is. If it gives you, a, gives you some information you didn't have before, if it helps you out on making a decision, fantastic. And uh, you know what? Y'all have a good day.